Honestly though, like I, I don't know if it's the dress, if it's my beard trim, if it's my natural texture, I am like, should we just do like a whole video about how attractive I think I am? So we are gonna talk about how to blow curly hair straight. How to blow your hair straight, there's a million different ways up this mountain, there's a million ways we can do this, but one way that we cannot do this is without what? Heat protective. Good job, Patty! These are two of our gorgeous heat protectants over at Ajavian Hair, we love it so much. This one is Instant Recovery Serum. I love it so much, can't stand it. This one is Blowout Styling Milk. When you're blowing your curly hair straight, if you have like really curly hair, like if it's in the three family or the four family, like it's like kinkier, coilier, if it's a lot curlier than mine, you gotta start with your hair really pretty darn wet. Like you don't want it to be super duper dry. I like to just base my hair with Instant Recovery Serum first to just make sure that my ends have a little bit more protection, a little bit extra love. Now I'm gonna take our Blowout Styling Milk. I'm gonna do two pumps for my whole head. I'm starting on my ponytail, then kind of dividing my hair down the middle all the way. And I'm just running the Blowout Milk through my fingers. Then what I like to do for even distribution is just take your comb, pull it through. The other thing I thought would be fun is if we do two different techniques on the hair to show how, diff how many different techniques there kind of are. One side I'm going to rough dry and the other side I'm gonna round brush. So I think I'll round brush this side. One of the reasons that I love these Olivia Garden round brushes is that you can use this little pointy zombie killer to section the hair. And actually, I think I'm gonna do the reverse. I think I'm gonna start from the top and just work my way down. And blowing your hair out is really about tension. You gotta put like really good tension on it and even tension to blow it smooth. And I like to work on the top half of the hair first, like work on the root, then go to the mid length, then go to the ends. Another rule of blow drying is that if you put the round brush on top and pull, this is gonna take volume out, right? It's pulling the volume out. If you put the round brush underneath, this is kind of putting volume in, right? Cause you're kind of setting and pulling the curl out over like the hump of the curling iron, right? So like, or the, curl, or the round brush rather. The section I was using was probably a little too big. The size of your round brush should dictate the size of the, the section. It should be about the same thickness. See, the smaller the round brush, the loopier it's gonna wanna be, but since we wanna kinda straighten the hair, I'm gonna go with a little bit of a bigger round brush. I also do love these Olivia Gardens too, cause you see how long it is? So yeah, I'm gonna just, don't need too much volume here though, I kinda like it a little sleeker. And you see how now that I'm getting to the ends, I start to move a little bit more slowly. Cause you really gotta like smooth that hair out. Smooth. I do like this nozzle. You can actually use a blow dryer without a nozzle, but that's better for you if you have really, really fine hair, because it'll make your hair bigger. If you have like bigger hair that you want to make smaller and straight, like really coarse thick hair, you want to use this nozzle, oh God, because it's going to concentrate the airflow and it's going to make your experience easier than if you didn't use a nozzle. Because the nozzle is also called a concentrator because it concentrates the air. So see how I'm kind of taking the hair and wrapping my ends so that my ends aren't getting heated. So, cause your ends, you need to like be a little bit more careful with, just cause they're older and they're more fragile, especially around your face. And now when you wanna get those ends straight, instead of allowing the brush to curl it, you gotta almost make the brush go flat so that it can like straighten. You see how slow I'm going over those ends? And that's gonna start to take that curl out. So I see I still have some curl right here, right here. So I'm gonna try to smooth that out a little. If you're having a hard time getting that curl out too, you can always use a bigger round brush, which will be easier to make a straight end. You could also take a paddle brush and go like this. There we go. See how nice and smooth we got that. So bigger round brush is gonna give you a smoother end. A medium round brush is gonna give you more of a flippy end. A small round brush is can like give you like, you know, those big kind of blown out waves. So that's how we do that. And now I'm just gonna kind of continue that process all throughout my hair. So this side is like, if you've been round brushing your hair, 
if you've been kind of experimenting with this and this isn't your first rodeo, this is for you. If you are newer to your hair, then I think the next side is gonna be like a better place to start. But can we talk about the gorgeous shine here? Now, around our crown, sometimes I feel like it's nice to start to play with more volume. So I'm gonna start to like pull this part more up. So here you're gonna see I'm putting the round brush like underneath the section because I'm not mad at a little bit of volume here. And this is kind of the nice thing about having a big ass round brush like this. You can just take like way huge sections and just pull out the curl in your hair. You do get a little sweaty when you blow out your own hair. There are some tips of the trade though, like don't blow out your hair in your bathroom right after a shower because it makes it even hard to get your hair straight if it's like humid in there. I do like blowing dry on top and on bottom of the section because I do feel like it knocks the volume down a little more. So this is like on top of the section. And then this is like underneath the section, right? This is just to kind of show you the difference of like round brushing or like pulling the hair out smooth with a round brush first versus just rough drying the curl and then flat ironing it. There is no one right way to necessarily do something. Like there's a lot of different ways to do hair and they're all cool. They all have their own rhyme. They all have their own reason. And it's cool to explore like different ways of styling and exploring people's ways of doing things differently. But I will say, Nothing wrong with JBN hair shine here. Wow. Now we're just gonna rough dry this side all the way using our fingers and see how that turns out. So I'm using my fingers here to kind of start to pull out any of the curl, any of my natural curl. And I'm just kind of really tugging on my hair using my fingers, pulling down. Just because if you're not gonna round brush, like let's, you know, use your fingers to help you. Otherwise you can just go like this. I also like to kind of get this angle underneath. Now you could also use like a paddle brush and just do it like this too. I kind of like to use the head like an ironing board and almost like push Use the flat of your head to push, push, push. There's a fantastic technique called flat wrapping where you wrap your hair flat around your head like this, like all around your head. And you clip it and that's how you sleep. You can utilize that same motion of the flat wrap as you blow dry to use the shape of your head to your advantage to kind of like pull the curl out using your head. You might see some smoke coming off my hair right here and that's good. That means the product is working. It means that your hair is protected. And if you feel like a piece of hair is dry, like this hair for me is dry, you can pick it up with your hand like that because you don't need to keep drying hair that's already bone dry. That's kind of how hair can get damaged. All right, so everything is dry. You know, I think you can see the, the difference pretty significantly. Like. This is the unround brushed side. This is the round brushed side. Here's another way that you can kind of do things differently. Now you can take your hair when you're flat ironing it and you can section it, which is what I'm doing here. You wanna make sure you have a great heat resistant comb. I like a wide tooth one. These are YS Park combs, YS Park combs, love them. The straightener is GHD. So the thing about flat irons is that your hair is gonna come out of the flat iron the same way it goes in. So if the hair isn't smooth and straight going into the flat iron, it's not gonna come out of the flat iron like that. And you're gonna have to iron it like a lot of times to get it straight, which we don't want. So sometimes I like to take the section of my fingers, take the flat iron and just tap the roots out. Then look down for your comb, grab your comb and go flat iron comb flat iron comb. That way you don't have to go over the section a million times. I see that the ends are kind of curling in a little. If you want it straighter, just try not to bend the ends. Just make the flat iron, and don't be afraid to let the flat iron sit on that bottom a little bit. See that? You really can just like, especially with the heat protectant, you can let it sit to really smooth out your end. So now I'm gonna work my way up in sections. The density of your hair is gonna determine how many sections you're gonna take and then how curly your hair is. 
So the denser, meaning like the more hair per square inch, and then the curlier your hair is, meaning like the tighter the curl, is gonna dictate how small of sections you're gonna have to take. You're probably gonna see a little bit more like of an S curl up on the scalp on this side than what you'll see on the other because we've already pulled it out more on the other. So see how I'm just kind of going in there and pulling the root out? You're basically just gonna repeat this process all the way up. So you can see, cause like I didn't round brush this side, how there's like these like little S's up here. So we're gonna wanna like really press those out. And again, we're just protecting our hands from that heat. So you can see there's a little hard crease right here. So then all you do, is just take it, I'm gonna make a skinnier section and pull the hair taut and then just tap, 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 tap and get it out. And on this side that we didn't round brush, I do feel like I'm pulling it like a little harder. Like you need to like put some tension on that hair. I like to section the hairline so that it's like moving. It's like a diagonal line here. Do you see that? And now here I'm actually gonna leave the ends out because I'm gonna gather those with other ends. I don't need to iron that 50,000 times because hair's more fragile. I'm going here, tap. Tap, tap and pull, okay, got that, looking good. But see how I left all these ends out? So around your hairline, because the hair is usually more fine, you do wanna do a little bit more sections so that it looks a little fuller at the top. I find if I clamp all that in one section, it looks a little thinner. Wow, you guys, look at this sexuality. Are you JV and hair sexual? Oh. Can you guys give it up for this hair? If you're menopausal like me, pull your hair off your hairline and then clip it with these creaseless clips to keep it off your sweaty forehead. Okay, so then on this side, because I round brushed it, I'm gonna show you what I lovingly refer to as the Tarzan approach, which is when you don't use clips and you just flat iron it really fast because your friends are waiting outside and you said that you left your house 20 minutes ago. So here you're just gonna take big chunks with the paddle brush and you're just gonna like, without using clips and without sectioning, you're just gonna iron it like that. It's the Tarzan approach. It's actually more efficient to do the Tarzan approach if you round brushed your hair first. If you don't round brush it first, you kinda need to do it section by section. If you did, then you can kinda get away with doing it in really big sections like this. So now I'm using the paddle brush the same way that I was using the comb on the other side. You wanna make sure that your paddle brush is heat resistant. Because if it's not, you can absolutely melt that shit in your hair, which you don't want to do. I just like to cold shot everything with your blow dryer at the end to make sure that if you built up any humidity from like working out, like moving your arms, that everything's all nice and dry and that the hair is set. Okay, so then I'm gonna finish everything off with a few drops of nourishing shine drops. Finish off this baby. I'm gonna take out my little hair clips. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like how much you would drop into a COVID test of those little drops. <laughs> There's hibiscus extract in this hair oil, which is really good for hair color. So if you color treat your hair, it's really good to help your hair not fade. If you don't color treat your hair, it's really nice still because it just makes your hair super shiny. I don't color my hair and it's still gorgeous. <sighs> wow. I am sorry, but I am not sorry. In the words of Demi Lovato, look at this hair. We had round brush side not round brush side. Thanks for coming to my channel. We love you so much, YouTube. Please practice safe heat styling all summer long and actually all year round. It's really important. Thanks for coming to my channel. Love you, bye.